Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to compare these two dolls. We'll leave the clothes for another video and we'll have a closer look at those later. But for now, we are just going to compare the dolls and see which is which. Can you guess which doll is the original and which one is the recast? Yep, the one on the left is the recast. It's easy to tell because she's taller and we'll get into why she's taller later on as we disassemble the dolls. So this is the original Miku and we are going to start disassembling her. We'll start with the head and it's on there very firmly but it doesn't sort of snap off like the fake one did. The arms are put together using this rod and cup system. The Chinese Miku has the same method but they just don't fit quite the same. But visually they are so much alike, they even use the same size bolts and nuts in the elbow joint. Here are the two hands, the fake Miko on the left and the original on the right. And again, they are visually identical right down to the paint, but you can see how the paint isn't quite perfect on her nails there. And the joints is shiny on the fake one, where it's nice and matte to match the skin color on the original. Also, if you look closely, you can see on the fake Miku's wrist, that the joint isn't fitted together perfectly and there's a bit of a bump there where the two parts come together on the original it is perfectly smooth and was put together very carefully this is the upper arm and again very similar they both have a reveal on the side there can't really see it on the original but the plastic that they used on the fake Miku's joints, again, is so shiny and doesn't really match the skin. The legs on the original Miku doll are difficult to get off. They're not really meant to be removed after the doll's assembled, unless you want to do some work on it. A once in a while kind of thing, but they do come off. And again, they are very similar to the legs of the fake Miku. But notice the difference inside the hip joint between the two dolls. It's almost like the hip joint has a place to recess down into the outer skin where the fake one is just sort of flopping around in there. It has the recess but it just doesn't fit in there. It doesn't want to go in there. Also, there's a bolt missing. That might be why her hip is just flopping around like that. So the inner skeleton again is very similar between the two as you can see. The soft vinyl on the original Miku doll makes it a lot easier to separate though. And there's the waist assembly and all the bits too. We don't want to remove this anymore because it will be very difficult to get her back together if we do. And here we can compare it to the torso in the fake Miku and if we really yank at it. The first try, I didn't think this would come apart because it was so tight. But here, in just a second, we gotta get some twisting action in there. There we go. It's separated. And again, as you can see, the parts are, again, extremely similar. There does seem to be some extra plastic on the fake Miku's skeleton though. It looks like it has an extra joint. It looks like this yoke shape piece here is longer about twice as long as the original and that's why she has extra height and the elongated torso and here are the two torsos again the major difference visually are just the color and the shininess of the materials used but when you get it in your hand you can definitely feel the difference between the fit finish all of the craftsmanship that goes into one of these dolls just isn't there on the fake doll when compared to the original. On the back of the neck here, they both have 
the Vogue's logo printed right into the plastics. They definitely just took apart an original and recast it. You can see just how soft the vinyl for the torso is on the original when compared to the fake one. It seems like the only place that deviated from the original was the extra bit on the skeleton. And you can really see the difference here when we put the original back together. The waist and the upper torso tuck in nicely together and have a perfect fit. And when we reassemble the fake Miku, well, eventually we'll reassemble the fake Miku because this plastic is so tough. It's hard to get it back together. Doesn't want to stretch. As you can see, that's as far as it wants to go and it gives us a ridiculously long waist. This version of Miku is all waist. She's got a long body. That's where the difference in height is coming in. Mm -hmm. So here we have the two heads and the cast again is almost perfect. But there does seem to be a slight difference in the shape. Very, very minor. Not even something you would notice unless you were holding them right up next to each other. The real difference you see here is the wig and the painting of the face on the fake Miku. Here you can see the profile almost exactly the same, but the way that they painted the eyebrows and the mouth is the big difference. And the makeup around the eyes as well. They are a little heavy handed with the makeup on the fake Miku. Looks like she is ready to go clubbing while the original Miku is ready for a day at school. Both of these dolls, you can open the skull and change the eyes if you want. The wig. You can see the original Miku's hair is very shiny and sleek and could almost be mistaken for real hair if you weren't careful. The fake Miku's hair is not as shiny and feels plasticky and it doesn't have that sort of iridescent quality the original has. And the stitching on the wig is another telling point. It's denting like that because it doesn't quite fit fake Miku's head properly. A little too tight but still leaves a void. No void here on original Miku. And here I've switched the heads around on the bodies. So the original head is on the fake body and the fake head is on the original body. As you can see, they fit together nicely and you can probably interchange more parts as well, but I don't want to do that. You can see the color difference as well. So now they're back to their original bodies. They kind of look like sisters. The fake Miku is the older sister. So final thoughts. If they can copy this well, they're obviously capable of manufacturing a good quality doll. Why can't they just make their own? They can have an original doll that doesn't step on copyright or the artist's original work. It's a shame that this otherwise fine doll if it wasn't for the copyright issues and whatnot, this doll would have been a fantastic entry doll into the higher-end doll market. For around $200, it's a good price. I hope this video clarifies some of your questions. And now you know what you're getting when you get an original. And what you are getting if you get a recast. If you are buying online, you can't really inspect the doll. So usually the best hint is the price. So make sure you buy from a reputable dealer to make sure you get what you are looking for. Thank you for watching the whole video. Please subscribe and click the bell icon so you know the moment Darling Doll's new video comes out. See you next time.